we actually go into the power rule, the last rule that is, it's only three rules for um, properties of logs. That's all. There's only three rules. Before we do that, we have to go back to our fraction exponents and our radicals and all this stuff. Because they're going to expect you to know how to change this, um, the radicals into fraction exponents and backwards and forwards. So when you're, ex when you're expanding it, you need to make sure you can change it from the, uh, the, the fraction exponent to the radical and vice versa. When it comes to condensing, you need to be able to change it from the, um, the radical fraction and backwards and forwards. You got to make sure you know how to do it all. So with it, we're going to talk about expanding these here or changing these from the, the radicals, the radical form, to the fraction form, the fraction exponent form. Right, so, with this, each time we write these down, we always put down the number, the thing that's on inside the radical. So that's x. So x is that thing that's inside the radical. Now, now the exponents, the five and the three, are going to be part of that fraction. Now, anything that is underneath the fraction, uh, underneath the radical, sorry, anything that's underneath the radical. That becomes the top of your fraction. So anything underneath the radical becomes the top of your fraction, your numerator. Anything that's on the outside becomes your denominator. So in this case, to change that from the cube root of x to the fifth, we would take the five, make it our numerator, because that's underneath the radical, and we take the three in front, which is our radicand, we put that on the bottom of the fraction, and so we say x five over three. I mean, not bad, we can do that. So this next one now, it's a little more tricky, but let's see what you can do. So what do you think that would be? Since there's no number there, what do you think number for number, since there's no number for the radicand right here, since there's no number right here, what do you think that number would be? Since they didn't get it to me. Anybody say one? Yeah, one, one, one. You're not right. You're not right on that. So it's not one. You have to think about what is the name of this shape right here. Because we already have a parent graph, and one of, one of our parent graphs has that shape when it comes to the actual function. So which one of those is it? This is called square root, right? Square root. So, if the, pretty much the root here is that radical part, what does square mean? What number is square? Or we say something is squared. Like x squared. What does square mean? What number is that? Two. Yes. Two is square. So we write, we're going to write the two up there. Even though it's going to be imaginary, it's there. So all we do now is take that and make it, again, the x is underneath it, so we write that down. The 9 is underneath the, the radical, so that's your numerator. And the 2 is in front of it, so that's your denominator. And let me write this so that nobody thinks it's like a y or some weird y or something. So you should get x to the 9 halves power. So 2 is the radicand, that's imaginary there. The 9 is already given to you, so that is 9 over 2. That's x one. Right, let's just try one more just to get everybody's feet warm and all of this stuff. Let's try this. Alright, so what would you think that would be? Everybody got the same thing of x seven over four. Okay, so not bad. So you can also you can do it with the slash line for the um, fraction bar. You can do a straight line. Either one, it works. All right, so we got that way. So let's go backwards. It's always good to be able to go both directions and be able to make sure you understand how to do it. Okay, so let's say we have. Let's write this better. That's, that was 10 to the one third power. Let me write that in. 10 to the one third power. Right. 
and we're going to need to write that in the radical form this time. So they gave us the fraction exponent. They gave us the fraction exponent. Now we have to write this in the radical form. So let's do that really quickly. So underneath the radical, we know that 10 goes down there because that's that big number that's underneath it. But now again, we have to figure out where does the 1 go and where does the 3 go? We said that the number on top is what goes underneath the radical. So again, the number on top goes under the radical. So that means the other number must go in front. So what number is on top when it comes to this fraction here? One. Yeah. So one is what goes underneath the radical. One goes underneath the radical. And so that means that three will go out in front. So with that, I'm going to rewrite it because you can rewrite it a different way too. I'm going to leave off that one on the inside. And that's it. It's understood to be a one there as an exponent for the two. It's not hard. Again, the number the number on top goes under under the radical. Underneath the radical. Alright, so then here's the last one here. Let's write this in here. So with our radical again, you know why it goes underneath. So, what number goes underneath the radical? So, 3 is the top number, so that goes underneath the radical. And then 7 goes out front, right? And that's it. That's all you have to do. And that's going to come back into play. You're going to see that more, like, the rest of this um, exponential, not exponential, but law of functions and all that stuff. That's going to come back into play a lot. So even that worksheet I want to give you guys later on, a puzzle worksheet, it's going to have that on there. So you have to remember how that works and what it means. I'll look at stuff. Okay, so that's the review there. So let's go into now the power rule. And let's go to cover up some of this material we see all at the same time. The power rule. Now, as you're writing the power rule down, I want you to take a look at it. And I want you to tell me, what happens to get the left side to the right side? What happened in the problem so that the left side changes to the right side? There's only one thing that changed, so what do we do? What happened? What changed? Okay, so hopefully everybody has it written down now. Now, what changed it? What happened? All you did was take the number, the exponent itself, and move it in front. And that gave us x, natural log, and base b. So whatever the exponent is for power rule, all we did was take that and put it in front. That's it. That's all you got to do. And the only other thing that might happen is you might have to change the, ra the, um, the radical into a fraction exponent, and then move it in front. Well, that's it. You got to change it to the frac to the exponent and then move it in front. Exponents always just go in front. So, for example, three. Looky here, we got a radical here going. On. We got a radical going. On. So we have to write change that to the fraction exponent and then move it in front. So let's do the fraction exponent part first. So we know we have log natural log x. But what is our fraction for this. And again, we know the number, the exponent, the number underneath the radical goes on top, and the number on outside, the radicands, becomes your um, denominator. So the number underneath is understood 1 there. So we're going to do 1 divided by 3. And that's our fraction exponent there. That's our fraction exponent. So, with that, now we just do the power rule and move that exponent to the front. The exponent moves to the front. Okay. 
And that's it. We're done. Ooh, that's power rule. Ooh. Hey, woo. All right, and then the last one, B. We have nothing but numbers here. So this is all numbers. We're going to have to find the decimal answer. But let's go ahead and do the power rule first, and then we're going to do the decimal answer. So we have log 3 to the ninth power, base 6. Do our power rule first. Take 9 and move to the front. Ooh, that's not all. Take 9 and move to the front. And again, log and 3 are on the same line. That's not, 3 is not an exponent. All right, so now we put this into the calculator. And the best way to do it in the calculator is let's do 9 all together. Well, put 9 in front. We're going to do our fraction first. So we do log 3 divided by log 6. Find that decimal number and then multiply it by 9. So log 3 divided by log 6 and then multiply that by 9. Everybody should be working on that to find the answer. What did everybody get? Five point five one eight. Is that what everybody got? You did. You are good. You're absolutely correct. You're good. You're good. You're amazing. You're amazingly good. Okay, so that's it. That's the three rules there. The product rule, whenever you see multiplication, you're going to give each thing a log and put a position sign in there. And if you have quotient, each thing gets a, a log and subtraction goes in the middle. And then the power rule, we just take the x one and move to the front. And if you simplify it down, we simplify it down. That's it. You get a log, you get a log, you all get a log. You get a log, you get a log, you get a log, you get a log, you all get a log.